Call me more like salute the Sarah to the Open Public Meetings Act adequate notice of this meeting was forwarded to the official township newspapers posted on the bulletin board and township website on January Can't hear a thing. Two. It was there. Sit closer to the front. I get out. I can't hear anything. Cannot hear her. Mr. Doyle. Here. Mr. Deegan. Here. Mrs. Pesh Wilson. Here. Mrs. Swain. Here. Mayor Bruno. Here. Uh, can I get a uh, motion to open the first public portion for resolutions and ordinances below? I make a motion. We open the first public. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have uh, just a couple quick questions on your resolutions, okay? Yes. Resolution 209-22, Malaga Fire Commissioner Compensation. Um, this is the, uh, uh, it's my understanding that if the fire company has fire commissioners that they have to when they submit their budget to the state that the state then says that you guys have to approve what they want as compensation is that correct that's correct okay we and a few months ago, so you, well that's what i was wondering is there any other fire uh, companies that had this the uh the one we did a few months ago <clears throat> was the first time i've ever done it so I guess Mr. Deegan, you're, you're, you're a fireman. Or you were you a fire commissioner, right? At one time, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay. Is your fire comp does Star Cross are they are they do they compensate theirs? Do they compensate Do they do they yeah, do they compensate their fire commissioners? Yeah, just yeah, it's not much at all. Yeah, I never knew it to be, but I mean when I'm seeing the amounts here and normally uh, at one time it like the state didn't mandate this, correct? That that it had to come before you. This just, came from their yeah right that's what i'm saying so this is where now it has to come to you and not to like normally when their budgets and things like that they were always asked Internal. during the right internally okay i just want to be sure is there okay that's what I, i'm not sure what the understanding is of it but that's my understanding was that the state when they they won't approve their budget if they don't if they if you guys don't approve it they won't approve their budget that's not okay. All right. Then I was told something inaccurately then. <laughs> Can you explain it to me? What What is the case? Well, you send it up to the, to the state. Right. They approve it. Okay. Um, and then it's, you know, again, we present it to the um, folks in the communities within the election, I believe is the case. Uh, we have a in your annual budget. Right here. Uh, I think he's trying to get up. But, <laughs> you get them to you put the budget together, and then in February, when you put it out right. for election, the, the residents get the opportunity to approve it. Okay. Well, I live in Malaga, and this first, you know, I, because it is my own fire district, I wasn't sure if all the other ones, because I haven't seen them on the, you know, uh, that often, and that's why I'm asking on that. My my second question is on the resolution two seventeen twenty two that you have on tonight, um, and um, who who is our CFO right now? In, in our township. Who's the CFO? Robin, Robin, Sarno. Robin is. Okay, good. Well, she's obviously covering everything. I can see that because you got quite a few things on tonight. So maybe uh, the administrator, I'm not sure. But I see where she has a, um, apparently there's, uh, there's a change order from uh, where there was, uh, is that an, an underpayment of $3,500? We. So the, so the original resolution that was put through right. had an amount and there was a second page it was in it for, uh, okay. for that 3450 so now that we're at the end of the year we'll come you have to cut the accounts and they sent an invoice we went back and looked at it and realized it was an oversight so it has to so the best way to explain it is 
it's a change order to the original resolution because we shorted that. that you, right, that's what I was wondering. So you're just kind of tidying up loose ends on that before your end of year? Okay. Yeah. And then, similar thing to just, you know, yeah. when he was appointed, we failed to put his salary into the original okay. resolution. So we have to correct that with the auditors to put in what his actual salary would be. Yeah, that's fine. And then the last one is that other change order, too, that I saw here. No, it's a budget transfer. Yes. And that one there. So out of your police budget, it says you're transferring $13,000, right? Yep. And you're going to put it in $3,000 into the line item for the general government and $10,000 into telephone in your operating. Uh, is that what that's going into? Yes. Why do we need $10,000 in our telephone line item? Because of all the internet and all that. Phone. So, so is, so is that where your internet is coming in under that, under couple, telephone now? A couple meetings ago, we did the whole thing with Mammoth Communications, so they're handling all of the internet, telephone, everything. So, it's so it's not just telephone. No, no, no. You got a, you got a bigger it's, it's, chunk it's, in that it's, budget. It's, become, it's actually a money saving situation, but it's become one gross entity. No, no, I'm happy that you're CFO. I'm, I'm happy to see that. You know, I think she's putting it where it is. I just. There, that's the only questions that I have. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Let me follow up on the Go ahead. Oh, is that my five minutes already? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor. Uh, Joe Petsch, 2370 Stanton Avenue. Uh, as chairman of the Board of Fire District of Number Five, uh, this salary the salary ordinance uh, resolution that uh, was questioning, what the state does is that if you list in your category in your budget salary, you need to take it to Township Committee exactly what District uh, Four is doing, two is doing. Uh, if you list your expense as expenses, as in travel expenses, fuel, those type of things, you do not have to present the resolution to town. Some boards choose to categorize it as a salary. Other boards choose to categorize it as expenses, which is your traveling expenses and gas and uh, those type of things. So uh, why, uh, th th there's your answer on why some fire districts do a salary and others don't. Thank you. <laughs> Newark Craig 4448 Coles Mill Road. I just want to know when is the appropriate time to talk about the uh, proposed redevelopment thing? Uh, towards the end of the meeting, Laura. Okay, thank you. It's great to see you out. It's good to see you. It's the first time I have been out since June. Make a motion to close the first public portion. I'll make a motion to close the first public portion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve correspondence and reports. I make a motion we approve the correspondence and the reports. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the minutes from November 22nd, 2022. I make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second those. Use my I'll second it. I was going to say my <laughs> Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Uh, no. Mr. Doyle? Uh, I was thinking I wasn't here. Mrs. Lane? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the bill list? I make a motion to approve the bill list. I'll second. Oh, Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Lane? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Can I get a motion to approve the licenses for 2023? I make a motion to approve the licenses. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution. Can I get a motion to approve res resolution 20722? Requesting the director of the Division of Local Government Services to authorize the insertion of a special item of revenue in the 2022 budget <coughs> of the Township of Franklin Youth <coughs> Leadership Grant. Make a motion that we approve R 20722. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mayor Bird? Yes. Uh, resolution 20822 requesting the director of the division of local government services to authorize the insertion of a special item of revenue in the 20, 2022 budget of the task of franklin fy 23 grant well, we hear a lot of stuff where we don't get any grants the last couple of weeks we get quite a few yeah. i make a motion that uh, we approve our 20822 second mr deegan yes mrs Pesh wilson yes mr doyle 
Yes. Mrs. Slayton? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution uh, 209-22, approving and reviewing the township, Franklin Township Fire Commissioner salary for 2023, Malaga. I'll make a motion that we approve R-209-22. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution 21022, awarding contract to Taylor, Wiseman, and Taylor for the surveying services, farmland preservation projects, and the total amount of $7,950. I make a motion that we approve R21022. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Glaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution 21122, awarding contract to West Jersey Title Agency for the total services for farmland preservation projects and the total amount of $823. I make a motion that we approve R21122. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruce? Yes. Resolution 21222, authorized the Township of Franklin Administrator to eliminate the previously designated position of crew, uh, crew leader within the Department of Public Works. I make a motion that we approve R-212-22. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution 213-22, appointing Brian Farrell as a Class Three School Resource Officer for the Township of Franklin Police Department. I make a motion that we approve R-213-22. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution 214-22, authorizing the mayor to execute an employment agreement between the Township of Franklin and School Resource Officer Brian Farrell. I make a motion we approve R-214-22. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution 215-22, authorizing the Township of Franklin Police Department Deputy Chief to enter into an agreement with the New Jersey Chief of Police Association to administer promotional examinations with the Police Department for the ranks of Corporal and Sergeant. I make a motion that we approve R-215-22. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Special Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution 216-22, amending R, Resolution 154-22, authorizing the salary of SLEO Class 2, Jesse Miller. I make a motion that we approve R216-22. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Special Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Resolution 217-22, change order to contract with ease, design, and landscaping, Inc. for lawn, weed, and brush maintenance of the Township facilities for 2022 and the total amount of $3,450. Make a motion that we approve R-217-22. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Special Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. And Resolution 218-22, authorizing the Chief Financial Officer of the Township of Franklin to transfer certain from certain funds from and to specific accounts in the 2022 budget of the Township of Franklin. I make a motion that we approve R-218-22. <coughs> Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Slade? Yes. Mayor Bruno? Yes. Uh, can I get a motion to introduce the following orders? The public hearing will be held on December 27th, 2022. And it's Ordinance 2522, amending and updating the community center rules and regulations, along with updating the rental contract application and fees for use of the community center within the Township of Franklin. I'll make a motion for the introduction of Ordinance 2522. Second. Mr. Deegan? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Pesh Wilson? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mayor Burton? Yes. Again, that, that public hearing will be held on December 27, 2022. Uh, and with that, Matt DeCesare, would you like to speak? Sure. Mayor and Council, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I'd just like to go over a quick report with everyone um, in the public tonight. Um, everyone received my monthly report. Um, for the month of November, Franklin Township Police Department responded to 3,893 calls for service. We took 168 reports, made 63 arrests, six DWI arrests, 
responded to 71 motor vehicle crashes, conducted 1,411 motor vehicle stops, and wrote 1,102 tickets for the month. Um, every officer in the department participated in self-defense training, um, which was mandated by the state. And Officer Davey was our Officer of the Month. Um, and he is an officer that's been with us for seven years. He was previously a detective, and he really does a, a good job for us. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about and um, go over with the public tonight was our second annual holiday with a hero event that we had over the weekend. Um, along with the Newfield Terrace Community Center, uh, members of the Franklin Township Police Department and about 15 other police agencies and fire departments throughout the county. Um, we took 111 needy kids from our communities to Walmart and shopped with them um, Saturday morning. Um, the event started out at Janver School where we fed every child breakfast. Um, the officers then escorted um, the children to Walmart in Williamstown and it was really a, a very moving thing um, to see the officers interacting with these kids. Some of them were very, very needy in our community um, and it was very touching to see some of the stories and, and, and some of the, the, the needs of some of these kids. You know, they were supposed to be, some of them were supposed to be buying um, presents for themselves for Christmas and some of them actually asked if they could buy food because they don't get to eat that much. So um, we were very happy to be able to do that. Um, some people that I want to thank um, for us being able to do that. McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, and Wawa all donated breakfast for us. Um, I want to thank Mr. Walton, superintendent of the elementary schools, for allowing us to use Jambier School and donating two bus drivers that volunteered their time to drive the kids to Walmart. Um, many, many teachers and volunteers from the Newfield Terrace Community Center um, that came out and participated um, and the Township Committee, um, several members were out there on Saturday participating and, and supporting this event. Um, and most importantly, I want to thank Cindy Parker from the Unity Committee um, for helping um, organize this and Gina Reyes, our police secretary, um, who did a, a great job with organizing this. It was just a very touching thing to see this and um, one of the best experiences I've ever had in my career to be part of this. And um, it was just outstanding, something that our community should be proud of. You forgot to thank yourself, Matt. Yeah. You did a lot of that work. Well. All right, can I get a motion to open the second public portion for any comments? I make a motion we open the second public portion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Hello. Narcite, 4448 Coles Mill Road. Explain to me why we need a redevelopment zone declared. What advantage is there to that process? I used 15 seconds. Go. The, um, the only thing I'm going to tell you is there's a public hearing on the matter at the planning board on Tuesday, December 20th. And that's when the questions and stuff will be entertained with the planner and the engineers there. So you're saying the township committee has no role in we're this at all? Gonna, we're not going to speak on that until after the planning board holds their public yeah, hearing. There. Okay. What is the role of the township committee in this process? What is the role of the township committee? Yes, sir. Matt? Um, Mayor, if that, it depends based on the referral that comes back from the planning board. If, uh, and I don't, you know, depending on what that is, could require uh, formal action by the governing body to designate uh, areas. But again, that'd be premature to get into a, a sort of more specific uh, explanation. But there would be a formal role requiring formal vote by the governing body. Okay, so I'm going to assume then if the planning board is all gung ho to do this and they decide, okay, let's make a motion for a redevelopment zone in the spots. And yes, I read that whole long thing. <sighs> Boring. Uh, which pretty much says that anything, anywhere can be called a redevelopment zone, even if it's virgin land. Though what they're redeveloping, I haven't a clue. That you, they are gonna come back and you guys are gonna make the final decision as to whether or not to approve a redevelopment zone. Is that correct, Mr. Lyons? The, any formal action to declare it will be done by the government. Okay. I'll tell you right now, I'm against any redevelopment zone if it means you're doing it so that you can get grants that are publicly matching funds. 
that increase our taxes, that increase the development in the town, right? These properties are privately owned. My opinion is if they want to develop them, they can develop them with their own private money mm -hmm. to do so. And no tax money or public money should be used in this process. Up to and inclus including wasting engineers and legal time in considering whether or not you're going to do a redevelopment zone. That's my input. Thank you. Thank you. I got one question. Bill right. Travis, JD1, Bentley Drive, Malaga. Thank you. All right, who on the committee okayed the planning board to rezone? Planning board rezone it. Re rezone. It says here rezone. We referred it for the I know they're not yet, but who, who okayed it for the planning board to, to step in and. I believe that. Why? I referred it to the planning board. We referred it to the planning board. Why? Because we didn't know that that's the requirement of. Us to do the yeah, but why? Is anybody here have a conflict of interest with any of this? I don't, I don't quite understand what you're getting at. Conflict of interest about what? About the property? Right. No. Not at all. Are you? Do you know what property the zoning board is talking about? Yes, I do. Oh, you do. Well, we don't. Mm -hmm. Well, it was it was right. it was put out there, right? Was, uh, what was put out there? What's the name of the company? What's the name of what company? Yeah. Uh, the, you want to develop it? Yeah. That we don't know. I'm sorry. That we don't know. We know who owns it. We know who owns it. That's all we know. Who owns what? The properties. The township you said owns it, right? No. We don't know. No? Well, why would they rezone it then? If you look at the map, there's a bunch of 50 by 100 lots. There's no legal use for those. That would be one reason. Yeah, my property is half a mile from that zone. I mean, and I'm concerned about is, my right? property. Well, nobody's going to rezone your property. No, no. So you don't but, have a concern about that. What about the water rights? Yes. Mm -hmm. What about the water? Mm -hmm. You have unlimited water rights as a resident of New Jersey. Oh, yeah? What if somebody pollutes it? Mm -hmm. Then what? Yes. What's, my, what's my well going to be worth? Mm -hmm. What's my property going to be worth? There's questions there that nobody's answering. I still say somebody has a conflict of interest in this whole damn thing. Well, who is it? Cause well, I don't know who, but we're going to find out because we're going to investigate it. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Any motion to close the second part of the portion? No, there's no more people that want to close. Okay, well, they need to come up. Okay. What's the hurt? Well, nobody's coming to the mic. Nobody's coming to the mic. No, How do I know that they have somewhere to be? Or you want to be the mic? I don't really think I. Uh, Barbara Halpern, Harding Highway. Okay. I assume that, hi, good evening. I assume that these plans are hatched at the uh, EDC, the Economic Development Committee? Were they discussed there before all this study? Joe? Were they? Oh, sorry. No, not yet. Not yet. It, they haven't discussed nothing, it at all. There's nothing to discuss at EDC. There's no one standing here saying, I'm building this building today. That's not what I mean. Um, but anyway, I do want to note that EDC has no minutes and they have no agenda. Why is that? Every other group has them. There's no transparency there. Uh, I would think it's required. Isn't it required? Why does the uh, Environmental Commission and all the other groups have to have I'll minutes and agenda? I'll find out for Rosemary when the last time EDC met where the minutes are. Okay, well, thank you. What I want to say is that, you know, it's <coughs> upsetting and it's it ignores the will of the people and it destroys our quality of life and 
you know, you're spending our tax dollars to propose development on a mostly forested, a forested area of approximately 380 acres. It's not just the Fazio property, it's much bigger. If it's made up of smaller lots, they can be combined. If there are uh, paper streets, they can be um, vacated. So the redevelopment zone, there's no reason to do that for those reasons that were mentioned to Nora. Um, our tax dollars should not be given away to enable corporations to avoid paying their own development costs. I'm not anti-business, okay? And I know people try to label me that way, but it's not true. The master plan made the zone a zone that welcomes travelers to our township by providing amenities for people that come off the road, making it welcoming. Not for warehouses or other large businesses that are going to cause issues. Development's going to happen. Why would we speed it along? It's only going to make our lives miserable. It's going to cause possible problems for everyone, and it will cause problems if it's a warehouse. Every town in South Jersey right now is fighting warehouses, not just Harrison, but Pennsville is also fighting. They've already lost the battle a couple of times because they didn't have the organization and the skills and the money that we do to fight. So they're all upset and they're feeling sad and depressed about what's happening to their town. Uh, if you read, all these warehouses that are already there, the people that live around them are miserable. You know, when the employees all get out of work, it's not a fun time for anyone, let alone all these trucks. Uh, the amount of pollution that's gonna be caused by this is gonna be ridiculous. You take down a forest, you put up a parking lot, you put up buildings, you put up something this large and it's going to have impact regionally. It's not just going to impact the people of Malaga, the people who live where some of you live, way far away. Uh, you're not going to, you think you're not going to feel it, but we're all going to feel it. It's going to impact all of us. It's going to cause property values to fall. It's going to cause people to flee. And when people flee, the people that come in are going to be less able to maintain the homes that, that these people who love our homes, who've lived here for decades and don't want to have to leave. But you will be forcing people out of their homes, not just the ones that will end up with eminent domain if they don't cave and sell their house to whoever the entity is that wants them for access. And the report reads, the tone of the report is pretty clear. The house next to the old Iona Deli, that house, it basically says, oh, well, that should be access for the Iona Deli. Okay, are we residents less important than commercial buildings and commercial businesses, the residents should come first. This is a town that people want to live in and have the rural environment that our master plan says we should have. Not urbanize the whole thing overnight by putting in huge amounts of asphalt and cutting down our forest, taking away areas that our citizens like to hunt, our citizens like to walk, our citizens like to breathe clean air. I live on the front lines. I may not live next to this, and I may not see that much difference where I live on 40. But I can't walk out into my front yard without a carbon filter mask now. Do you want to inflict that on the entire Malaga community where their children are sick because they have to breathe particulate matter from the millions of trucks that are coming in, from all these employees? Do you really want to do that to us? Do you really want to disregard our quality of life? These are the affordable homes down in Malaga not the McMansions on the other side of town, or the people in the Pinelands who, some of them don't give a crap about the rest of us who live on the front lines. You know, my health is impacted, children's health are impacted, elderly are impacted. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be brief, Kevin Kelton, uh, Malaga. Uh, my question to you, Mayor, is um, why are the Franklin Township taxpayers on the hook uh, for multiple studies of a redevelopment zone for a private investor? That's how redevelopment works. We have to pay that. The, the, uh, we have to pay to do it. Why can't the private investor put out the $16,000 per study? Matt? Mayor, they, they, ordinarily it, it's uh, not done that way in, in order to ensure that the, the report is to us and not to the developers, so to speak. Can you repeat that, please? Mm -hmm. 
Can you, they can't hear you in the back, Mr. Lyons. Could you speak into the microphone? It's a, it, it's a concern that if the developer pays directly for the report, that it may have an impact on the report, and that's why we we pay the cost of that. So it's a circle. So. The, air, the area is, is certainly not an area in, in, in need of redevelopment. We, we all know that. We all drive by there because simply it's never been developed. So why call it a redevelopment area? That's what the study's called. Right. So why go forward? Why is it needed? Yeah, this is not the planning board. That's where you need to, that's where the public hearing is not holding a public hearing today. After whatever the planning board decides, mm -hmm. it comes back here, then I guess those questions will be answered. I understand that, but you gave the, the planning board uh, <clears throat> in, in the process of how it works is it goes from you to the referral over to the planning board. Correct. So why, what was the trigger for you and the th and the other the four members of this committee. The what was the trigger? The interest to develop the portion down there. It, it can be developed now. What? It it can be developed well, now can without develop, a study. What, what, what can what can be put there, Captain? Please tell me. It's in. Uh, Please tell me what can be there. Let's see. Hotels, motels. Uh, yeah. Without combining yeah, 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 the lodge or anything like that, right? right? Without any trees. Without cutting down any trees. It's already been clear cut, Tim. No, we're talking, see. We're jumping all around. We're talking about trees. Who's talking about trees? That's the problem that I'm talking about. Why would you redevelop a forest? First of all, are, you, are we talking about the south, the southeast corner? The 50 acres? I guess my question is what part It's being, it was wooded and now it's being farmed. That's a business, is it not? Mr. Doyle, are you not in the farming business? That's a legitimate business, and he's working the operation now, and he's getting the tax breaks, farmland tax assessment to go along with it right now. So, why does it have to? Why is it an area in need of redevelopment? You haven't explained that to me, and he could sell it the way it is now. It's been up for sale for two years, three years. What, what was the trigger? What, who came to you for you to pass this Nobody. along to the, uh, the planning board? Nobody. So out of thin air, you just out hatched of thin this. Air, a piece of property like that, at an interchange, both sides of 55, made total sense. Made total sense. Might not be sensible to you because you're on the other side of it, but it makes total sense to us to look at it and see if it can be redeveloped. That's, that's that's the gist of it. One comment, we didn't write that report, we asked for it. Okay, so uh, to me, it would be arrogant to make a decision well, without asking for the planning board, asking for an engineer to look at it. Right. And there's some fear mongering. If you read the report, okay, which I don't agree with that report, it's italicized. It's called non-condemnation redevelopment. Okay? That's only a first step. Okay. I yeah. promise I would never vote to condemn anything. I think it's on I, okay, well, I'm glad we got that down. It's in bold print. Yet people are sitting there talking about it. It's like property. That is a lie. Well, the investor, the investor that invested in this property, knew what the conditions were before he invested. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kelly Zoppel. I live at 45 Tatum Road. Um, you mentioned non-condemnation. Um, can you tell me exactly what you think that means? What, what that means to you? What it means to me? I'm mm -hmm. not a lawyer. What it means well, Mr. Lyons can chime in too, please. <laughs> yeah, well, what it means to me is this is a study on property that's privately owned by a person who is dead. No matter what we, the planning board, anybody comes up with, it's their right to choose how to do it. So if your house happens to be next door to that, and you want it to be your house, in my eyes, it's your house. Just because if, if even if the zone change, I own property that the zone's changed over the years, the property didn't change, the use didn't change. I agree, and when I read it, I, I would agree with that too, that it was a lot of fear mongering, but then I looked further into non-condemnation redevelopment area, and that's a pretty, um, 
interesting rabbit hole to hop down is that it can, I know, and that's what I'm, I'm just, I'm bringing you this to you as a concerned resident, okay? Um, and this is something probably before, cause you guys don't, this isn't even on the agenda for now, but this is something to maybe look into before the planning board and all that stuff. Um, it's A3615, Chris Christie signed it into law in 2013. Now it's supposed to protect property owners. However, it's only a short jump from that, it sounds like it's gonna be one more study and they can make it from very simply from a non-condemnation note zone into a condemnation zone. And then we're talking eminent domain, development taking properties. It's really, it's not. That would be simple to me. You wouldn't include private properties. So if your house is next door, and, and for some reason, I know there's one house that I don't think it was included. I told you yet. Well, I, I, why is it where it is? I, well, I know, There's but old surveys and right. And what I can what I can read to you is that the act permits the municipality to reconsider whether the redevelopment area could be classified as a condemnation redevelopment area and acquire properties under its eminent domain powers. The act does not go far enough in providing greater protections from eminent domain for property owners. Um, it's really it's something that I really think that you as a board should look into. Is that it's 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 a slippery slope you know if you guys accept this plan from the from the planning board and it goes further it is a very slippery slope to where we could be right now we're not talking about it but in six months a year we don't know we could be talking about it so that's just my main concern with it okay and i can repeat for you it's it's um chris christie it's a 3615 it's an act okay I, yep. I mean, you have to take formal action to take anything. There's been no discussion of that at any time. I, I don't believe there's any. You know, I don't, I don't house is just do me a favor and look. Just do me a favor we'll look and look into it. I would appreciate that. that. Thank I you. Yeah, I know. I and that's my main concern. Yeah. I know. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm in a learning curve here. <laughs> All right. So bear with me. You're not on the uh, In this issue, I am. I know I'm older than all of you, but hey, you know, cut me some slack. I don't no, have as much gray no, hair. No, no. Um, two things. One is, was because of the the crick, what's the name of it? The lease? The lease that runs out of Iona Lake. I don't remember this stuff. Um, that runs down there, a good honk. Uh, oh, and for clarification, Kevin, it's not just the Fazio's Corner. It's all the way up Route 55 from Route 40 to Iona Lake. Okay, up against Route 55. Fazio's is already a farm field. Build on it. Um, right. Half of that piece in the report, or at least a third of it, is wetlands. Okay, now I'm sure Barbara can give me the right environmental language but the areas around wetlands are important to the wildlife, not just, you know, 50 feet on either side of the creek, as it were. Um, did the township, did you as a committee, in looking at this land and the other lands along our creeks, um, consider getting this and grants for this to buy it, to put it in permanent preservation? That piece, I'm not talking about Fazio's. That would be up to the owners of the property. We can't just buy it. We have to want to sell it. There, well, I, I understand that. But if they're looking now at developing it, then obviously somebody has an interest in developing it, which means selling it to somebody unless they're going to develop it themselves. Are you knowledgeable about that in any way? About the, 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 well, about them wanting to develop it, you're saying they don't want to sell it. But I, I, I don't know them, and I'm saying. That I know there are grants available for us as a town mm -hmm. to buy private lands and then put them in permanent preservation, in particular along the streams mm -hmm. where we can. And my question is. Did you, as a committee, look into this at all in doing this in no, this zone? Uh, no. no. Okay. And the second question, uh, Mr. Bruno, uh, Mr. Mayor, excuse me. Um, you said out of the blue, we thought this would be a good idea to develop it. Now, I thought the planning board started it 
and now I'm the input I'm getting from you is that you've launched the planning board to look at doing the redevelopment is that correct that's the process yeah. okay can you tell me or lawyer or anybody tell me what advantages are there to the town in declaring anything a redevelopment zone does that make you eligible for state funds for federal funds does it clear some roadblocks and ordinances why well it, it wasn't done in order to secure any grants that i'm aware of or any funding but why is it done at all in other words if this guy or girl or whoever owns this land wants to redevelop it why do we have to go in other words if i want to develop my land i don't come to you guys and ask you know for my acreage for you to make me a redevelopment zone so that's where i am confused and seriously in a learning curve here mm -hmm. why are we doing so create a real development zone process the only real way other than cutting costs to lower the tax burden for residents is commercial development no, no, no. Why the redevelopment zone process? Not why do we develop land? Why are we creating a redevelopment zone? That's my question. Why do we want to do that? Where are the benefits to that? And I seriously don't know the answer. I'm not being a wise guy. Yeah. What's the point? It's my understanding that if, if the property is designated as a redevelopment zone, it gives you the opportunity as a town to offer pilot programs. And that's the payment in lieu of tax. Okay. And that would be, again, when you think about it, money comes into the town, you get 5% to the county okay the town keeps the rest currently 58 cents every t every tax dollar goes to the school these monies that would come in would give the township the availability to use more of those funds for projects as road improvements park cleanups and build out of parks and so forth like that it makes more of the tax dollar available for the township to be used versus if it came in as normal taxes, it would then split it up into all those pies and the township would get 20 cents of every dollar. Okay, um, my now I read something somewhere, I read a lot of stuff uh, where the cities or they were thinking about changing the law or they were protesting that the payment, the pilot programs were not funding the schools like in places like Newark and other place and that they were either considering changing the law or had changed the law uh, so that pilot funds that came in could not be diverted from the school system. That hasn't the happened yet? What you're referring to is the, let's say the city of Newark, New Jersey, um, really exploited that whole program and um, they were just... But if they're not allowed to take money from the schools, how could... It's still, it's still in the books. The, the, the pilot program is it, it, still part okay. of the statute. All right. But you're saying, in essence, <laughs> that aside, one reason is... That's possibly one reason. That's the only reason that I'm familiar with, I, personally, myself. Okay. So reducing a tax rate for these, basically fishing to get people to come in to build by offering them the reduced tax rate? No, it's not, it's a, not reduced a reduced tax, tax rate. rate. It's the tax rate's the same, but we keep the tax local to the town as opposed to giving it to the county or uh, school. Automatically getting divvied up how it normally does. And it requires a redevelopment zone to do that? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And you, the rate's the same. You're sure about that? In phase other words, payment in lieu phase. of taxes. It's phased in over a five-year period. I believe it gives us the ability to set the rate or control the rate. So, in other words, what advantage is it to a business to take a pilot thing if the rate's exactly the same as if they didn't? The rates are the same, but you don't you pay instead of charging them a hundred percent of the whole project, you may charge them fifty percent of the tax bill the first year. 
and then it graduates up to what's 100 percent of its pays in over a five year just like if, and even in a project bond like that they would be taxable which is similar it's tier it's the idea is the attractiveness to be able to come in you give business the advantage in essence over the residents well there's a uh, I, I disagree with that comment only from the fact that you, you get more of the tax dollars to be used within the town yeah. again 58 cents goes to the schools 20 cents goes to the town currently right. I, now, I understand that now all but five percent of whatever they pay us during the pilot program stays in the town and you can give money my last question will you consider as a committee working with the environmental commission and the grant processes to see if grants can be obtained to buy um, again i'm not talking about the fazio's corner but i'm talking about along little ease there as much of that land as possible along Little East and put it into permanent preservation. Will you work, you know, make it in essence a goal of this particular group? Property that's come before since I've been here and 10 years before that. We just property. started the process. Of we just did two tonight. Cool. So, I, I mean, we're, Franklin Building, you can ask Ralph, is probably one of the most prolific towns in preserving ground. I'm a farmer. I love preserving ground. Yeah. I would not be well, I'm, I'm concerned with the, the outflow of Iona. Here's a, here's a point I'd like to make. Everybody's talking about warehousing. I live on the other side of the town, Highlands, near the biggest warehouse in Franklin. So the biggest taxpayer in Franklin is RLS Storage. Right here, you got Tom and Sanger. I drive by there every day. It's never bothered me. It's a mile from my house. Okay, so he's on the other side of the town, too, next to the biggest warehouse in town. I think they're. I, I wish I had two more here because they pay and keep my taxes well. And I'm not saying that's what this is about. But my point is, I don't view warehousing as a bad use. The warehousing sure as hell beats what I've got across the street. <laughs> I know. It's when, it's when, when it comes to traffic, don't pick on my boys now. They are the best sand pit in the damn state. They do, they do good work. But yeah, it's a lot of traffic. Thank you for your information. I'd like to answer some of the things that Nora talked about. Yes, there are grants through Green Acres to buy properties, especially along streams, which is part of what our master plan, open space plan, um, is supposed to be that we've adopted. And yeah, we have great farmland preservation. We have zero preservation of lands for public use that are forested or otherwise, so we can have hiking trails and enjoy that kind of uh, things that we like to do. How big is Piney Hollow? Piney Hollow is only 200 acres. And Tim Doyle, you don't live near RLS. I do, I can walk there. I, live, I drive past it every day to work. Right, but you were. What's the definition near? Three okay. Left, I can walk there, I okay? And I often see it on my walks through my neighborhood Your behind. Are always more important than else. No, they're not. I'm supporting everyone else's rights. Do I live in the redevelopment zone? No. Will it impact me? Likely not. But it will impact the rest of us. And I, I represent everyone. I've, I've defended against a solar field that was 143 acres on the other side of town where I don't even go. I've never walked those woods, but I helped pay for an attorney to stop that project. So don't tell me I'm worried about my rights. I'm the only one in this town that hires attorneys, spends their own money. I am low income, but I have savings that was left that I earned when I was working. I am basically disabled, low income. I can get HUD housing. But I'm putting my time and my money on the line. Do you think I want to do this? No. But I don't want to see people get screwed because they don't know what's happening. And sometimes you guys make really poor decisions. And I hate to say that, but it's true. And you won't always be here to say, oh, we don't want to condemn that. And it may become necessary if they have poor development practices. Malaga was poorly developed. And we need things like a package plant for the sewage there. Why not make that a redevelopment zone and get money to make a package plant so that they have safe sewage disposal and not problematic overflowing septics that they have now? You know, we have so many things to fix because we overdeveloped poorly already in Malaga. Why do we want to make another mess down the road? You know, we spent $3 million on Meredith Farms. We're still paying off and we don't see anything from it. 
I'm afraid that you're going to make a huge mistake, screw us all. I own property in the Oak Avenue uh, area that I bought from this township on auction because I did not want to see us lose the trail there. I'm not developing it. I'm paying taxes on it. And I'm doing that so people can walk that trail anytime they want. And they're not fenced in by McMansions all over the place that stop people from walking. Because a lot of people say, I don't want someone on my property walking. Well, guess what? You're all welcome to walk on my property at Malaga Lake, on Malaga Lake Boulevard, where the trail is right across from Greenwood. I take the walk with my dogs frequently. It's a wonderful walk. And we need those places. And you've done nothing to provide those places for people. We need it. It's for our health. It's for our sanity. Everyone needs a place that where they can walk in this township. And we don't all live out of Piney Hollow where there's plenty of places to go. If you need to get in your car and drive all the way to Piney Hollow, less likely to happen. If you provide places in a nice neighborhood like Oak Avenue where people can walk, yeah, that's what we need. We need more of those. And you could have fixed Malaga Park. There was a grant. I gave you an email telling you. We have an open space plan. We have an open space fund. It costs us nothing when we get those grants. We still haven't, where's the Piney Hollow grant now? We were supposed to hear two weeks ago about that approval. Have we heard anything, Matt? Yeah, reach out again because we should have heard by Pinelands by now. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm up again. Cindy Merckx. I'm talking as Oak Avenue resident in the Malaga section. First off, I know you love warehousing, so I'll pick on you, Tim. No, I won't, really. I'm not picking on you because I like all of you, really. Um, but I want to say this. I bought there when I was only 20 years old. And I'm 64. And I got to tell you, I mean, it's the truth. I know. <laughs> only my hairdresser knows. But listen, one of the things I want to say is um, a lot has changed in those 44 years. And for many of us, we were farmers' homes. We moved out there while we were able to pay our education and raise our kids. But you talk about, and I got to tell you, I came from a town in Oak called Oak Valley, which is in Deptford Township. And those swamps up there became the Deptford Mall. And some of the people on my block, we were all young kids. We moved out here to get away from it all, like you, Tim. Yeah. But the thing is, is we didn't have enough money to buy more. You're fortunate, thank God. You know, you were able to buy more of the land around you. Most of us wasn't or it wasn't available. We would have probably bought more if we could have. But with farmers' homes, we were very limited. We couldn't even put a deck or a driveway in. Now, I don't want it to look like Deptford. When you come off of there and you see those swamp lands and you see that they might take a little section over the 10 acres that is up high and they just leave the rest of it, that's what it looks like, okay? And just pretend it's warehousing instead of a mall because that's about what the size of it is. Go to West Deptford. I grew up in the areas where there was all kinds of things that was there. And you know what? They put a, a nice big industrial park there. The traffic is a nightmare. Same thing with Logan Township. Okay, they have a nice industrial park there. And you know what, I can't get out of my, it is very difficult, and any of us can tell you who live in the Oak Avenue area, go ahead and try and make a left-hand turn to go down to downtown Malaga off of Oak Avenue. Okay, or come off of 55 and try and make a left to get into Oak Avenue. You got tractor trailers coming up behind you and you're lucky, okay, if you make it. And we have had accidents where people have been killed. So I know the five of you don't live on ground zero, and you made a decision and i want to know when did you make the decision because i go to meetings i own a newspaper here and i never got a call to say hey sin we're talking about your area when were you going to talk to us tim you know my phone number you guys could have called i would have been happy to all of us to get together and to talk with you about it but when you're making a decision in people's backyards whether it's yours or yours or mine you're going to have people come out because we love where we live and you know what? I love what we've done over these 40 years. That school, we, ha we have beautiful schools here. You know it. We all sacrificed to have the best. I'm glad that you came out. The whole point of this process is so people come out. Then we so want them to, because you know, we'll sit here and there isn't anybody. But when were you going to put this study out? The thing is, is that study is still not on your, your, your website. So the 190 page, not everybody could read it. If it wasn't for somebody leaking it to me at the newspaper and me then putting it up, you didn't even put the study up. 
No, the study hasn't been up for everybody to read. So there's other people who don't know, and they're like, what's going on? Okay, well, I'm glad that somebody leaked it to me. That's a problem. But I don't, the point is nobody was holding the study. We requested it, we got it. That's a point. It's going to be publicly discussed. It is, but the thing is, if they're going to go to the next meeting next week, they haven't even read the study. Right. How can I go to a public hearing if I haven't read the study? If I don't have an internet or it's not in an area like my library, how am I supposed to read the study, Tim? I mean, you would want that. I know you enough. I know all of you enough to know that you would want to read the study. And, you know, Mr. Deegan, it's really great to talk about readables, but I'm going to tell you from somebody who's put in 20 years as a reporter. <laughs> you want to see the areas that have redevelopment? Look at Clayton. Clayton did a redevelopment in 2011. They did a whole facade thinking they were going to get a million dollars in tax revenue. That didn't happen. Okay, and all these areas that have all this, they don't have any more. Actually, their taxes are higher than ours. So be proud of what you've done all these years and sacrificing because our taxes are lower than those towns that have all this industry and you know what Belmar looks like and those other areas if you let that happen let me tell you the, most people will never forgive you for it because you took a beautiful area and let it go so just you know I'm here just to say that as someone who loves it lives it hey look I spent I remortgaged my house because I wanted to keep a business of a newspaper going in this county and I, and, I, and I appreciate your time. I know I'm out of time, but God yeah, bless all of you. That, that wasn't the time, I said. Well, now it's up. <laughs> Good evening. How you doing tonight? I'll try and keep it as short as possible. What's your name, sir? Oh, sorry. It's Chris Sayers, and I live at 184 Malaga Lake Boulevard, ground zero-ish. <laughs> <laughs> good. good. Real good tonight. Uh, glad to see everybody out. Um, yeah, I just came here because I, I didn't know a lot about it. I received a flyer on my mailbox about this the other day, and it was the first time I heard about the redevelopment pro project off of 55. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a lucky person. I grew up in Williamstown, but I fell in love with the Franklin Township girl, and I, I moved here to this town to set up a family. I have two little kids in Malaga, and I love the area. And I love, I think what contrasted it, um, so much more from Williamstown where I grew up was just the rural character of the area, the, 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 the small town community, the, the homey feel that the, the neighbors are neighborly here um, and the area is just, just, just a nice place to, to, to raise a family. And I'm just afraid with encroaching development of warehouses of a Dollar General on every corner <laughs> in the township. I understand that we need revenue, obviously, to bring property taxes down. Look, I, I volunteer my time to try and make this community a better place. I have multiple times because I believe in this community. I, I believe in many of the people up on the, the platform. Um, but I fell in love with the community because of its character. And I'm just really concerned with all the development, especially in Malaga. Again, Dollar General's on every corner. You go down 40, there's a Dollar General down there. You go on Delcy Drive, there's a Dollar General in Malaga there. there there's box stores getting built up. I, I understand the need uh, to partially develop. Again, you constantly need revenues, but I'm just concerned that it's getting a little bit too much, especially focused in the Malaga Village, Malaga area. Um, again, uh, 40, I live, I, I take that Oak Road uh, drive because I go right from Malaga Lake Boulevard to Oak Road and to get on 40, especially during rush hour, it's a nightmare. And I mean, there's also, while there might be financial benefits in putting warehouses there or whatever it's redeveloped to, there's also obvious costs. Uh, will 40 need to be widened to put a turning lane for Oak Road? Um, maybe it should have a light there to begin with already. Uh, you know, obviously that's a planning study and a, a traffic study would need to be done. Uh, would sewers need to be constructed with septic systems? I, I purchased my house in 2016 and in order to purchase the house, I had to build a raised septic in the backyard just because the water table is so high on Malaga Lake Boulevard that it, the, the, the effluent wouldn't drain properly unless it was a raised bed. So, I, you know, again, just with all these issues, I, I assume, because I believe in, in everybody up on the, 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 the dais here, that you guys have studied the issues uh, to the best of your ability. But again, I would just like to, to put my input um, that you look at it again, uh, look at it hard, 
and and ask yourselves maybe if this was right down the street from yourselves or in a certain situation you wouldn't would not necessarily want to have that construction site there that that extra business there or maybe not even just concentrate it all in malaga maybe spread it out throughout the township um but i, I i'm I, i'm not going to deny that uh it's not an easy task that you all have uh it's not easy to keep property taxes low i understand that um but I think fighting for the character of the, how the township is now and what I fell in love with, along with my wife, uh, along with raising my family here, uh, keep that character the same or, or fight to keep that character the same. And I would just appreciate that. And that's just my two cents. Um, so I just thank you for your time. And I pray uh, you guys make uh, a wise decision. Thank you and good night. Could you possibly postpone the hearing on this for till the month following? Because it's Christmas time that this is being presented and it doesn't give anyone enough time. I mean, you haven't even read it yourselves. Right. I, I think we need to at least postpone the hearing on the redevelopment zone until the following month for the planning board so that people are informed. And if you want to see the report, I would like to know where to see it. How do you address this? You want to see the report? Go to greenfranklintownship.wordpress.com. Is it? Okay, because it's been up on mine for quite a while. Um, yeah, and that would also give us a chance to decide whether we want legal representation and whether and give our lawyers time to get there because and get a planner as well because there are issues here then sometimes things are very one-sided when they're presented to the boards so give us a chance give your residents a chance if this is such a great thing then give us another month so that we can get through with our holidays and enjoy them without this hanging over our heads thank you Hi. Hi. Brian Powell, uh, 456 Oak Avenue. Um, so I'm kind of new coming in here and what's going on with the property and all that. So I'm not going to say it's a good thing or a bad thing. But what I would like to ask you as a committee is, you, you please, you got to do your dil diligence here. You have to, you have to look at the options, what's going on here. Um, you know, I've seen some property in this township go out to people um, because the township said we need to put it back on the tax map, map to, to draw that revenue. I get that. But there was a large block of woods in, off of Oak Avenue that I don't know if you've been over there lately. It looks like a hurricane went through that property. We didn't own that property, sir. The township owned that property. No, we did not. The township owned that property. The previous administration put it back on the tax map, put it out to oh, bid. The, you're going back. Yeah. All I'm saying is that piece yeah. of property, as we speak, it it's been obliterated. They came in there and they logged it, and it, it's just it's just horrible looking. It doesn't even look like the same piece of woods. So I'm asking for that not to happen again. Take a look at what you're doing to where I don't even know where the property is, to the be honest with you. Has, just, just so you know, sir, property line where I believe you live on Oak Ave is not in the study area that it's being logged or whatever you're doing there. The property across the Route 40 that was cleared for a farm field, right? It's already approved for commercial storage, warehousing. No, it's not. And, 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 and again, it's, but the, the wooded properties that they're talking about are on the other side of 55 from their house, like behind Bush Town Cyclers, on both sides of Route 4. Gotcha. Again, I'm, I'm not here to say it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know that you folks are, but all I'm saying is what I've seen in the past, you know, right across from my house, um, it's a travesty. It's a travesty for the, for the township to give that property away, pretty much. Nine thousand dollars for sixty acres, like that's not a sale. That's not a sale. People exploited the system, worked the system, right? And now, I, I really I don't know if you folks have ever driven down Oak Avenue. Take a look on that side of the property towards Fifty Five. It's just it's terrible. 
It's, it really is. It really is. So all I'm asking is you please do your homework on this. Um, obviously, you're affecting people's lives. Um, I, I don't know if I'm pro or con with, uh, you know, with redevelopment and all that to bring businesses in. I, again, I, I realize, you know, you got to bring corporations in, companies in to, to try and lower taxes. But, you know, we were told that before, too. Let's put it back on the tax map. And who knows if any taxes were ever paid on that property? Probably a couple of people in this room that, that know that. But again, I'm just asking, please do your homework here. And uh, do do the right thing. Do the thing that, like these folks are saying, put yourself in their position down there. Pretend you live down there. I don't. I don't know. But I don't want the same thing to happen to another piece of woods that happened to that piece of woods on Oak Avenue. It's really, really bad. Really bad. So thanks. Thank you. Is it within your authority to do a? resolution or whatever to tell the planning board to delay their public meeting until next month you have the authority as a township committee to do that Matt, no, no i believe that's already been noticed and there's been money spent whatnot yeah, that's that's a planning board decision whether or not to proceed but i couldn't hear what you said there at the end you said that's a planning board decision Township committee does not have the authority to tell the planning board to take something off their agenda. Right, Matt? That's correct. That's correct. All right. Thank you. If they do get a postponement, isn't the legal notice good to carry to the next meeting? If who? Yeah, I'm not going to. No. I'll defer that to Mr. Borelli. Because that's commonly done, and I've seen it done many times. That's for an applicant. I'll defer to Mr. Borelli's judgment on that, Mayor. All right. We get a motion to close the second public portion. Anybody coming forward? I think the motion to close the second public portion. I think I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Dar, I live in a Forest Grove section of Franklin Township. It seems to me that you don't really know everything that you're talking about, all the things that are in the plans. Or it seems to me that you're holding back. And uh, it seems to me that that extra month is what you really need. And you have done this very uh, hastily and rashly and it seems to me that all the people in that area their property levels their the prices will go lower what advantage would that be to them and how can you call it a redevelopment how can you legally call clear-cutting a redevelopment? Is there anyone else like to come forward? Good evening, Eric Austin, 56 Greenwood. Just quick question of clarification. So if the meeting next week can't be postponed, you have a follow-up meeting when afterwards, 27th. the 27th. So with the document just being posted this evening, is that my correct understanding in terms of the report? Yes. In order to provide the citizens here in the room and those around us that aren't here, would you be willing to postpone your decisions as a result after the planning committee for another month? The, yeah. the, the process, Mayor, I, I guess to answer that question, the process would be at least a two meeting process. It, it cannot occur 
it won't occur in this calendar year. It would have we to, can't come it would back have to start for right when you say this passed. It has to go two meetings right now. Correct, and that those two meetings can't breach 1231. So whatever the planning board does and brings back here, any formal action wouldn't even begin until January. It, would it be assuming too? everything goes as as it could go, that, it, that, it, that it went that quickly i can't I, that so one we couldn't do anything on the 27th between the 27th and the 31st there's not enough time to meet all the statutory notice requirements and whatnot so consideration that is brought back to the governing body would commence in january and, and move forward from there and when is the meeting in january it's the uh, 10th and 24th and it would be at that meeting that the the decisions are finally made well at the soonest the the i don't think that that would be if everything we're not went, at least i'm not looking to push something through like we're, we're uh, no no i just yeah so i know what your concern is you don't want to wake up tomorrow and, and something happens correct but i don't i think we're multiple meetings from that uh, legally, what he's saying is just at least two, which would be at least it's a minimum of two. Yeah. And, and those those two again, they, they can't occur in separate calendar years. So that would be, if I'm not mistaken, the twenty fourth. Because the second is the tenth. The first meeting is on the tenth, so the second meeting would then be the twenty fourth. If no business can be held on the twenty seventh, that means the ultimate the possibility of a decision could take place on the twenty fourth. Of January. At earliest. Earliest. That, that's that's assuming not some saying, consensus right, direction. That's not from saying any kind of conflicts or anything like that come up in the meantime. You could be looking on to February, March. It could be a process. But the earliest would be January twenty fourth. The earliest devil's advocate that it happens would be the twenty fourth. Okay. But you would definitely want to see what happens on the tenth. Posted on the agenda on the 10th that there was something going to happen on the 24th. Correct. Okay. It has to be noticed. And we would be able to voice our opinions yeah. at uh, that meeting. Uh, Sometimes. And Sometimes. whatever the planning board comes up with, either whatever recommendation, yeah. positive or negative, would be also Correct. available to us and to the residents. Yeah, there's a public, just like uh, we did earlier with the community center public hearing, that would be the same thing with that, because that would be coming over. All right. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Seth Owens, uh, 173 Malaga Lake Boulevard and 330 Porchtown Road. So this gentleman spoke about that property. That was my backyard. When they cleared it, the, the, the river uh, still run. It kind of changed and moved further into our backyard, causing a whole lot more swampland. And because it was now protected swampland, they had changed it and we weren't able to put like a shed up or any kind of building we lost a tremendous amount of property value in that and this and yeah it was like 15 years ago but if something was to happen like that with this land who would be responsible like for that lost value and stuff like if that creek was to shift again just like happened before like is that on us? Like, do we just lose that? Well, again, there, there, there are questions for uh, for site plan review for the engineers, um, and it's certainly worth considering uh, th those issues. But that's not. There will be an engineer and planner at the planning board meeting on the twentieth. Now, when that property was originally cleared, was there an engineer and a planner for that too? Well, the, the, the piece is cleared on 40 now. So when it was originally cleared, and I say 15 years, but it might have been 20. Yeah, it's it's actually Leonard Cake, Porchtown Road, Route 40, and 55. You're talking about the part that's a farm field now? No, it's not a farm field. You're talking about the wooded piece? It's starting to get wooded again, yeah. Uh, he had spoken about it. I believe that that's so. We don't govern wetlands, the state. The state uh -huh. It was locked. Forestry is governed by the state. Yeah. <coughs> so I wondered what they're doing there is they have a forestry permit. Uh huh. Right? We, we can't. 
That's a state regulated thing. So, is the state responsible? I, like, I, I'm just, I I'm curious. I don't know. We this is, yeah. Clearing and uh huh. We looked into it. They had a forestry permit. Okay. Yeah, that's what they were operating on. Now, I don't know if this is privileged information or what, but who owns that? What the piece? Yeah, they're in between 55, Leonard Cake, Route 40, and Porchtown. Uh, I believe it's the same owners as the other side. The other side? They're wrong. Uh, no, you're talking no, about, talking about different, different No. Uh, he's talking oh, about, about this right. on the other side of the Avenue that they. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, when they did that, it destroyed those wetlands, and there, there's no farm field there. Yeah, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's no farm field there. It's just the he, he described it best. It looks like a hurricane. Yeah, I don't think they cleared there 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it looked like I said he described it best. It looked like a hurricane went through there. Like uh, the other day, I saw a beaver for the first time back there since they cleared that. So it's been 15, 20 years for that wildlife to return. Like, and I remember when they cleared it, the amount of, and I remember reading this in, in her paper about the deer. It, 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 yeah, it's, yeah. Right. Yeah. The amount of accidents increased because the deer had less area and uh, yeah, to do anything, it was just like, but yeah, there was a lot of, not just me, and people that I know and living on that road, they, they lost a lot of usable property that they had because it caused that creek to shift more forward. It doesn't take the same path that it does. Like you can look at the survey from our house from 1970 and compare it to now. And you can see that the, even though the, you know, the feet is still the same that we own. Now we have this portion on the other side of the river that is completely unusable. I yeah. Beavers, yeah, they can do it, but yeah, yeah. I'm currently having flying, but the beavers were there before I was. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, my question was, if something like that was to happen, and people were, you know, experiencing like that, where the creek would just shift in that area. Would there be compensation for them? Would they just lose out? Like, I mean, they, they, those issues should be addressed prior to anything. If, if it's a non-forestry use, if it's a land use we'll application, that, that they, they should be discussed yeah. prior to with the benefit of what you're telling us. Right. I'll make sure obviously, it to it. Do, do what can be done to avoid a recurrence of what you described. Yeah, I was there before they cleared it, and I'm there now, and, and I can give you 36 years of history on that on that area and what happened so you're still going to be thank you uh well we bought another house so i don't know what i'm gonna do with that one but thank you thank you thank you just to follow up on that um the uh that's where um you comparing it to rls is apples to oranges We've got a high water table there where water keeps getting diverted. You can't compare that to RLS with warehousing. And to my knowledge, warehousing is, a per, uh, is not a permitted use in that zone, according to the plan. What was approved in what I, what I read said no warehousing. So warehousing, that's, that's apples to oranges. I mean, I, I technically live off of Marshall Mill Road. Um, I, I, I would have no problem with warehouses out on Main Road over where you say where that is that's a fine place for warehouses but where we're talking about it's not and I can see where it's desirable because of the interchange with the trucking but the traffic pattern the water tables it's not it's really not anybody who really looks at it and walks that land and sees it sees where it's really not good land for it it's it's terrible land <laughs> to put that in out in Main Road absolutely sure put Put a dozen warehouses out there. That's great. I don't mind it. It's not. It's practically in my backyard, and I'm okay with it there too. But not over here by the lake, not over here by this interchange. I can see where it's a desirable piece for a developer to look at. But when we look at it, and you guys have the final say and the final approval, please remember all of us here telling you that it's really not. We already got a guy with water in his, his. You know, and that was from 15 years ago. So I mean, it's just. It really, it's apples to oranges. It's not that we're anti-warehousing. We're anti-warehousing there. We're anti-development there. So thank you. Please take that into consideration.
Can we get a motion to close the second public portion? Can you make a motion to close the second public portion? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Committee reports. Anybody? I just want to say thank you to everybody involved with the Holiday for a Hero. A uh, couple of us did have a chance to be down there, and it really was a um, heart wrenching yet bittersweet, um, touching moment to be involved with and participate in. And uh, thank you for doing that for our community. And aside from that, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas to all. And to all, a good night. Hi, I'd like to thank everyone uh, the police department, the unique committee. There's so many uh, aspects, the fire departments who took hand in this, Cindy. Um, and it was it was amazing. That's uh, what I look forward to every year. One of the biggest events I look forward to every year. And I especially like to take my children so that way they can uh, learn learn about uh, some aspects of life. Um, so thank you to everyone who uh, was involved in you know the police part of the fire, the community, Eddie, Newville Terrace, um, all the other <coughs> counties and the police departments. Um, so that was that was an amazing day, and like Heather said, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. And um, we'll see you thank before you the year. for coming out and letting us hear hear you. So that's it. Um, I know uh, Shop of the Hero was a uh, success. Everybody's talking about it, so I'll skip that. So we give credit to the police and look at the stats. And, just blows my mind that somebody can do 400, 600 percent more tickets in one work all year, pretty much. So the year's almost over. So next year we're working to get your own stats. So it's going to start. But I, I want to give them credit. I also want to give credit to the DPW guys. Uh, everybody wants their leads done yesterday, but this guy's blowing away at it. Every Saturday, I see them. They're doing the best they can, and there's been positive feedback. So that is all. Sometimes trying to get in the parade for the Tom the Hero, those yeah. deep guys. <laughs> I, I want to thank all the volunteers that participated in the uh, Shop of the Hero. Uh, I want to thank all the businesses in town that contributed um, the money and, that, and, and the personal uh, contributions that afforded the monies so that it was 111 kids uh, good shop. I want to thank also the officers and the firefighters who spent their own money. Uh, you hear stories of um, firefighters just saying, hey, what else do you want? What else do you want? And they're, they're taking two, three hundred dollars out of their own pocket. In addition to the hundred and ten dollars that they had. Or the amount that they had, but they, there was personal sacrifice there as well. Uh, other than that, I want to thank you for allowing me to serve you over the last nine years, and I wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Uh, I just want to reiterate what uh, the rest of them said. I, the second year in a row, I had the uh, privilege of uh, first year with Shop with Cobb, and now it's who's the Shop with Cobb. Holiday with Cobb. Holiday with Cobb. Little fancy, little fancy name change. But uh, Cindy, Cindy Parker, um, Renee Leopardi, um, Matt DeCesare, I can tell you that they work tirelessly. If you listen to them complain about having to work with Matt, I'm like, it was tiring. <laughs> but, you know, 110 kids, I believe. 111. 111. I mean, they, they collected over $30,000. Uh, Wawa, uh, McDonald's, they all stepped up and donated. Um, and like Dave said, and I watched it, these guys were well into their own pockets, probably for the average of about 180 to 200 dollars that you know, they were spending, so these kids could you know, get some of the things they needed. And the most disappointing part to me was when you did see that one kid come up with a loaf of bread or some toilet paper or something like that. It was just you know, break your heart. Great your heart, but I, it was, I was glad to see that the people in the town and some neighboring towns and all participated. 
we had the um, sheriff's department, we had the state police, we've had we had numerous other uh, police jurisdictions, and it, it was really really a great thing to say. And I want to thank Ma, uh, Matt and uh, everyone that participated. Uh, like Heather said, uh, everybody said, have, you know, have a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, and uh, with that give you the motion to adjourn. Um, if I could, Mayor, don't forget the Wow Wow up at uh, Portstown and um, the healthy Drive opens this Thursday. Boy, it's great to go to be able to buy gas in your own town and not have to drive to the far end. Uh, to it. But, uh, again, they're, they're great neighbors and uh, we're glad to have them be open. So with that, I make a promotion that we adjourn. Thanks for coming out.